Hi, my name is Kelsey Meyer and I work for the Center for Faculty Excellence at Bowling Green State University. Today we are going to be going over the basic components of accessibility in Adobe PDF. So you'll see I have a test PDF on my screen. What I did to create this is I just copied and pasted some information from the BGSU website. If you are working with a PDF that you own and created, we generally suggest that you make your accessibility modifications and remediations in the original document if you have it available in Microsoft Word because it is much easier to remediate for accessibility in Microsoft Word and then save as a PDF and your accessible formatting will transfer. However, if you do not have the availability to use Microsoft Word, I'm gonna go over the basic ways to see if your document is accessible and then to remediate if it is not. The first way to check if your document is accessible is to select the cursor and then you will want to see if you can actually select the text in your document. As you can see, I'm able to do that. So that means that if the student is using a screen reader or any assistive technology that the technology is reading this as text. If you're unable to select the text, that means that it is being read as an image and it will need to be remediated. If you do not own the document, so if this is an article or something that you scanned, we would suggest working with accessibility services to get anything remediated for a student who has a documented accommodation or working with the university libraries to source accessible documents so that you don't need to remediate them in the future. So to get started with accessibility remediation, you will need to have the appropriate version of Adobe on your system, so your laptop or your desktop. As a BGSU employee, you have access to this for free. You will need to have Adobe Acrobat Pro DC. This is the version that allows you to edit. As you can see, I have my um, editing option here and do an accessibility check. So if you do not have this version, you will need to contact ITS. They can be reached at 419-372-0999. To get started, you will select View at the top, Show Hide, Navigation Panes, and Order. So this is the reading order. The next you want to do is View, Show Hide, Navigation Pane, and Tags. So reading order and tags are the base and the foundation of accessibility in PDF. The reading order and the tags will tell the assistive technology software how to read the document and what they are reading specifically. So is it an image? Is it a table? Is it text? Is it a list? So tags and making sure things are tagged correctly is incredibly important. The first thing you want to do is run a basic accessibility check. So I have it loaded here on my right toolbar. To get it added, you want to go to tools at the top and then scroll down and you would as since I'm mine is added, it says open, but you would want to select add and then it'll be on your toolbar over there. So let's run the basic accessibility check. Full check. And you want to make sure all of these are selected. So you'll see it'll show if it is seeing that there are any accessibility issues in the document. This is good to run before you start editing your tags so that you can get an idea of how Adobe is reading the current state of the document. So logical reading order and color contrast will always need a manual check. 
and then it'll show if there are any other issues. So it's showing that our headers in our table failed. The accessibility wizard or the accessibility checker is not always 100% accurate because while it is reading all of this as text, and that's great, it's not reading and telling us if it's tagged appropriately, which is incredibly important for assistive technology software. So that is something that we have to do manually. Now we are going to go over and see how all of the content in the document is tagged. I have selected my tags icon over here and I'll select the document and you can see it highlights everything in this sort of purple magenta color. So we're just going to arrow down and see what the tags are showing up as. So all of this content here is being tagged the same. It's all showing up as paragraph content. However, this is the heading of the document, as you can see, and this is one of the subheadings, and these paragraphs actually should be nested under this heading because they are related to that topic. And right now, they're all given the same hierarchy as being just tagged as paragraph text. So when an assistive technology is reading this, it's going to just sort of read it all without any indication that we're moving on to a different section or that this content belongs to this heading. So to edit these tags, what you'll do is you'll select the one that you want to change. So we want to change this to the first heading because right now it's being read as paragraph. So you'll make sure it's selected correctly, right click, you go to your properties and then it'll tell you the tag type. So as you can see, it's being tagged as paragraph text. We want it as heading one because it is the main heading of the document. There will only ever be one heading one in your PDF document. All of the uh, continuing headings will either be heading two or headings that are nested under that. So heading three, heading four and etc. So we want to select heading level one, and we will type in the title. And I will copy that. And paste that and close. So you can see now this is appropriately tagged as heading level one. We'll down arrow here. Now this should be a heading level two because it is a heading, but it is not as important as heading level one. So we're going to do the same thing, properties, and we want to select heading level two. And we'll type the text here. And copy and paste. Now what we want to do is nest the paragraph text with the uh, corresponding heading. So the following remaining paragraphs, one, two, three, four, these all correspond to heading level two. So we're just gonna drag and drop. So you can see it's nested under heading level two. Now you can see we get to another heading. This would also be heading level two. If we called this heading level three, it would be read as nesting under heading level two. So it would be sort of a subheading of this topic, but it's not necessarily, it's its own heading. So we want to change that to another heading level two and do the same thing here. And then just like before is we would down arrow to see which of the paragraph text belongs to that heading. And we would just drag, 
drag and uh, drop it so it's under the appropriate heading. So you would down arrow through the remainder of the document and just start with your headings and your paragraph text and make sure that they are formatted in the correct hierarchy. The next component of accessibility in PDF that we're going to cover is appropriate alt text. As you can see in our tags, we do have a figure. Figures can be images, they can be graphs, they can be icons. You always want to make sure that they have the appropriate alt text. Alt text will tell the assistive technology or screen reader what the content and the context of the image is. So let's check the alt text of this image. We will right click and select properties. It is tagged correctly as a figure, but you can see the alt text is probably just whatever the JPEG was named when it came over. So if we hadn't went through and checked for accessibility manually in this document, reviewing our tags, the screen reader would be reading this text and get to this image and start reading this and that would be pretty nonsensical to any student who is not a visual learner. So we don't necessarily need a title because this is an image, but we do want to make sure that the alt text that we have provides context and a description for what the image is. So for this, we have, and we don't need to say image because the screen reader will already be saying that it's an image and indicating to the student. So we want to just describe what it actually is. So we will say University Hall on EGSU main campus with the sun setting in the That gives a context for what the image is, and it also is a pretty good description of what is happening in the image. So now we can close that. You'll want to down arrow through the rest of your document to see if there are any other additional images. As you can see here, there's an image of Sick Sick right here that we'll need a description for, and there's also the figure of a graph. Now, this is a little bit different for adding your alternative text because it's not a photograph. So when we're adding alternative text for something that is displaying information like this with data for BGSU students and BGSU, or sorry, BGSU students and non-students who are using the rec center, we want to describe what the data is showing us because the students who are using an assistive technology cannot uh, participate as a visual learner. So we would want to describe um, what the graph is showing and provide that appropriately in the alternative text. So that way students who are unable to view the graph can still understand the context and what the data is showing. The next aspect of accessibility that we will be covering in uh, PDFs is tables. This is when it can get kind of confusing and when I usually see people's eyes start to glaze over when we cover this in our workshops. So you can see if when I'm doing my down arrow through our tags, we have a table here. And yes, it is tagged as a table, which is great. But we want to make sure that uh, we have the data appropriately tagged as either headings or actually just data cells. So for the table, you want to right click. And instead of going to properties, we're actually going to table editor this time. So you can see uh, TD is telling us that these are all being read as data. But we want to make sure that when a screen reader is reading it, 
it's telling us that these are headings and that this data belongs to this heading and that this data belongs to this heading, but also that this data, these individual data points on these rows, actually belongs to the uh, year over on the left. So it can get kind of confusing. So first we want to make sure we have our top headings labeled as table headings. So right now you can see their TD table data. So we'll right click, table cell properties, and we want this to be a header cell. And now we're going to select the scope. So this cell right here is a header cell for this column of data. And we're going to do the same thing over here because this will be a header cell for this column of data. Okay, now we have all of this data appropriately tagged to the headers, but we want this data to correspond with the year on the side. So this is not necessarily only going to be table data, so we want to right click, table cell properties, and we also want this to be a header cell and instead of choosing column, this is actually the header cell of this data in the row. So the scope would be row. And then we go through and we do that for the corresponding rows. So you can see it'll start changing the colors to show how it is appropriately indicated. So now we have table data and the correct table headers. Tables can be kind of confusing, especially when you have merge tables. So we do uh, suggest that you make all of your appropriate accessibility accommodations in the Microsoft Word original document if you have access to that. The next thing that we want to check is to see if there are any blank artifacts in our PDF. This could be uh, spaces between paragraphs or between images that are being read as paragraph text. We want to make sure that none of these blanks are tagged because when a screen reader or assistive technology is using the PDF, it will be reading a table or reading text and then get to one of those blank artifacts and just say the word blank out loud, which can be very confusing to our non-visual learners. So let's start tabbing through the document here with our down arrows and see what our, if anything is tagged. So we see here is one of our blank artifacts. It's tagging this space between the table and the image as paragraph. So we want to just hide that so that any screen reader does not read that out loud. This, and we'll just delete the tag. And we want to down arrow through the rest of the document to see if there are any additional. And as you can see, there are some right here. So we'll just right click and delete that tag. And here's another one. Right click and delete that tag. So as you can see, it's very important to manually check your tags in your document for accessibility because those will not show up in the embedded accessibility checker. The last aspect of accessibility that we're going to cover in this tutorial is lists. So we're getting to the last page in our PDF. And as I use my down arrow to move through the tags, I see that there is a list here at the bottom. Now this is not tagged as a list. As you can see, it's tagged as paragraph text. But as a visual learner, I can see that someone has indented the following information, which would indicate to me that it is a list that belongs to the title of residence. However, if I'm a non-visual learner and I'm using assistive technology software, 
This is not going to be read as a list, it's just going to be read as text. So there's no way that the student would know that this information belongs to this. So we want to make sure that it is appropriately tagged as a list. So for the list heading, what we'll do is we'll right, right click, select properties, and we want to make sure it's the appropriate tag. So the tag type for lists, scroll up, is list. And we'll type in the title. And we will copy and paste and close. So now we have our list and we need to tag these as list items. So we're going to right click, properties, and select list item. Now we want to make sure that all of our list items are nested under the list so we know that they belong together. So after you tag the, all of the list items, what you'll do is you'll select them with your mouse and you'll just drag and drop them under the list. So it would read this appropriately as this information is an item of the list of residents. To check your reading order, since this is always going to be a manual check, you will select reading order on the left and you will just down arrow through to see and make sure that the pages are in the correct order. And as you start tagging everything appropriately, that will also show up in your reading order. And it looks like everything on here is just fine. If you have any concerns about color contrast, that is also a manual check. On the CFE website, we have a page in our Just-in-Time resources for accessible course design. On this page, you can scroll down and select the typeface and color contrast and we have resources here to help you with any manual color contrast checker that you need. So there is the Web AIM contrast checker. And here you would input the code for the background color, or sorry, the foreground color and the background color, and it would tell you if this passes accessibility guidelines. If you don't know your color code, you can install Colorzilla which is the eyedropper on Chrome or Firefox where you could uh, basically use the eyedropper and click on the color and it'll give you the color code and then go back and input it into the contrast checker and see if it passes. Those are the main components of accessibility for Microsoft PDF. If you have any questions, please contact the Center for Faculty Excellence at cfe at bgsu.edu.